Hi, I'm Lowell with the Office for Mac Group. PowerPoint is a powerful presentation application, but to get the most out of it, you first need to understand the basics. In this video series, I'm going to introduce you to some of the skills that you will be able to use in all PowerPoint presentations. Keep in mind that you can pause and resume the video at any time to view the tutorial at your own pace. Okay, let's get started. When you open PowerPoint, the first thing that you will see is the PowerPoint presentation gallery. From here, you can start with a blank presentation, open an already saved presentation, or create a new one based on a template. For now, let's create a new blank presentation. Here in the left pane, click All, click White, and then click Choose. Notice that a blank, unsaved presentation titled Presentation 1 appears. By the way, to get back to the PowerPoint presentation gallery at any time, here on the File menu, just click New from Template. Or to create a new presentation without opening the PowerPoint presentation gallery, click New Presentation. In the next lesson, we'll look at some of the interface elements that you'll use most often in PowerPoint. In a new presentation, you can just click a slide and begin adding text and objects. But before we dive in, let's take a quick tour of the main areas that you'll use to do your work. Moving from top to bottom, first you have the menu bar. Each menu has commands associated with the menu name. File, Edit, and View are the ones you'll probably use the most. Once you become familiar with the menus in PowerPoint, you will find that they are similar in the other Office applications. When a menu is grayed out, like this one, it means that it is not available based on what you are currently doing in the presentation. Next is the standard toolbar, which shows the name of the presentation, in this case, a generic presentation one, because we haven't yet saved and named it. The toolbar also contains buttons for some of the most common tasks, such as opening, saving, or printing a presentation. If you're not sure what a button does, position your pointer over the button and read the tip that appears. Next is the ribbon, which is new in Office 2011. Each tab on the ribbon gives you quick access to features and tools associated with the tab. The tab you'll probably use most in PowerPoint is the Home tab to insert and format slides, which we'll do in a later lesson. To show or hide the ribbon, just click the Active tab or click this button on the right side of the ribbon. The left navigation pane shows a thumbnail image for each slide in your presentation. If you don't see the left pane, here on the View menu, make sure a check mark appears next to Normal. This area is of course the slide, which is simply a single page in a presentation. Each slide contains placeholders, which are preformatted containers for content, like these title and subtitle placeholders. The slide layout determines which placeholders appear on a slide. We'll learn to change the layout in a later lesson. Finally, the notes pane appears below each slide. Here you can type notes that you want to reference when delivering your presentation. During the presentation, only the presenter sees information in the notes pane. Before moving to the next lesson, let's do a few things to set up our working area. First, drag the border between the slide and notes pane to reduce the size of the notes pane. Drag this handle to resize the presentation window. And use the zoom slider to make the slide fit better in the window. Okay, in the next lesson, we'll learn to insert slides into the presentation. By default, a new blank presentation contains only one slide. Let's insert three new slides using a different approach for each one. First, on the Home tab, under Slides, click New Slide and a second slide appears in the left pane. 
Notice that this slide contains different placeholders than the first slide. Now, with slide 2 selected in the left pane, click the arrow next to the new slide button and then click Content with Caption. Again, a new slide with different placeholders appears below slide 2. Finally, on the Insert menu, click New Slide. Notice that the new slide uses the same layout as the previous slide, slide 3. Before moving on, a few tips about slides. First, new slides are always inserted below the slide currently selected in the left pane. And besides offering a quick view of each slide, you can also rearrange slides in the left pane. You just click and drag. But let's move the slides back into the original order and move to the next lesson where we'll begin adding content to the slides. Placeholders make it easy to add already formatted content to slides. Let's add text and a picture to some of the slides in this presentation. Click this placeholder on slide 1 and then type AdventureWorks. In the subtitle placeholder, type Adventure Waits. Notice that after you add text to the placeholder, the placeholder border disappears until you click in the placeholder again. Whether or not you add content to a placeholder, the placeholder border will not appear when you run the presentation. Now on slide two, in the title placeholder, type seven continents. Of course, you're not limited to just text on a slide. Each of these icons on the placeholder provides a shortcut to inserting different types of content. Let's insert a picture from the clip art browser. By the way, you can also open the clip art browser from here on the home tab. Okay, on the pop-up menu, click business and then drag the picture of the globe to the placeholder. On the bottom of the slide, click this button to make the picture fit inside the placeholder. Now, click outside of the picture to hide the placeholder. Keep in mind that the media browser offers quick access to other slide objects, such as photos, movies, shapes, and symbols. You can show and hide the media browser at any time by clicking this button on the standard toolbar. In the next lesson, we'll learn to apply a theme and layout to the presentation to give it a different look. PowerPoint themes and layouts give you a way to quickly apply a consistent design to your entire presentation. A theme defines the presentation's fonts, colors, background, and effects, while a layout defines how content is arranged on the slide. First, let's apply a theme. Here on the Themes tab, point to the Themes Gallery and click this button to see all of the available themes. Currently, all slides use the default Office theme, but let's go with this one called Inspiration and you can see that the theme design is applied to all slides. Now in the left pane, click slide two. Then on the home tab, click layout and then click title slide with picture to apply the new layout to the slide. If you're ever not sure what layout is applied to a slide, select the slide in the left pane and then click layout the applied layout appears with a blue border. And the same goes for the applied theme. Also, if you want to apply a different theme to individual slides, hold down the command key located next to the space bar on your keyboard, select the slides, and then apply a theme as you would normally. But let's use the undo button on the standard toolbar to undo that change and keep the inspiration theme for all slides. In the next lesson, we'll learn to format some of the slide content we've added.
When you format slide content, you simply change the way that the content appears. Although the theme defines most of a presentation's formatting, you can apply different formatting to any slide text or object. Let's format the text and picture here on slide 2. First, move your pointer over the border of the title. When the pointer changes to this four-headed arrow, click. The entire placeholder is now selected. Now, on the Home tab, under Font, click this arrow next to the Font Color button, and then click the Accent 4 color. To format specific text in a placeholder, click inside the placeholder, select the text directly, and then apply the formatting you want. Now click the picture of the globe and drag it to another location on the slide. Then move the pointer over the lower right corner of the picture. When the pointer appears as this two-headed arrow, click and drag the border to resize it. You might have noticed that this Format Picture tab appeared when you selected the picture. This is a contextual tab and gives you options for the selected object, in this case a picture. Let's click the Filters button and apply this glass filter to the picture. And also apply this shadow style from the Picture Styles Gallery. To remove all formatting from a picture, you can click Reset. But let's undo that change to keep the filter and shadow effect we just applied and move on to the next lesson where we'll save the presentation to a new folder. As mentioned in a previous lesson, PowerPoint displays the presentation name along the top of the standard toolbar. Since we haven't saved this one yet, the generic Presentation 1 file name still appears. Let's save this presentation to a new folder on your computer. You can either click the Save button on the standard toolbar, or on the File menu click Save. To give the presentation a different name, just type over the selected text. You can use spaces, numbers, lower or uppercase in a file name, whatever makes sense to you. The Format pop-up menu lists all of the available file formats that you can save a presentation to. For example, a QuickTime movie, PDF, or a PowerPoint template. For this presentation, let's use the default PPTX PowerPoint format, which is the standard presentation format for both PowerPoint for Mac and PowerPoint for Windows. As you can see, the PPTX file extension is already appended to the file name for you to indicate the presentation format. The Where pop-up menu lists the most common and most recent folders you've saved presentations to. To save in a folder that's not listed, or in a new folder, click this button. Then click New Folder and add a folder called PowerPoint Practice. Finally, click Save, and you can see that the new file name is added to the standard toolbar. When you're done working on the presentation, you can click File, then Close or click the red close button in the upper left of the window. When you close a presentation, you might notice that the PowerPoint menu bar is still visible. This is because you closed the presentation, but not the application. To quit PowerPoint, on the PowerPoint menu, you click Quit PowerPoint. But before we do, let's look at a couple of ways to find and open the presentation we just saved. First, click File, point to Open Recent, and here's the presentation. If the file you need isn't listed here, you can click More to open the PowerPoint presentation gallery that we saw in the first lesson. And then look here under Recent Presentations, 